Hello, I'm Cecilia Martinez, and I'll be walking through today how you can create a native mobile application using a JavaScript library. So we'll be doing that today with the Nuxt Ionic module. So Nuxt is a meta framework for Vue, so it's built on top of Vue. And we're going to get started with just a the boilerplate Nuxt application. So that's what the code uh, project you see in front of you here is. This is just um, you know, using npx nuxy init, for example, to create a starter application. And I'll show you what that looks like. So we're going to go ahead and start the server. And we're going to run that here in our browser. And we can see here, this is just the boilerplate template to get started with the Nuxt application. I have this running in mobile view just because we're going to be building a mobile application. So the next step is to actually install the Nuxt Ionic module. One of the nice things about Nuxt is that it allows you to add modules to your project to add functionality um, and gives you kind of these out of the box features. So the Nuxt Ionic module essentially incorporates Ionic to your application. What that means is that you're able to leverage all of the beautiful Ionic components that have a native mobile app look and feel, as well as gives you the option to build to native Android and iOS. So we're going to go ahead and get started by adding that module. And that's just as, as simple as running npm install at nuxtjs slash Ionic. And we'll go ahead and save that as a developer dependency. We're also going to need to update our Nuxt config. So this Nuxt config file right now is blank. What we're going to want to do is we're going to add the modules um, option with the Nuxt.js Ionic. That just tells Nuxt that we have installed this module and to use it in our project. So now if I go ahead and restart my server, we'll get a little message here that Ionic router um, is disabled because the pages directory does not exist. I'll talk about that in just a second. But you know we still have our default application. So in addition to automatically importing Ionic components, Nuxt Ionic module also gives you a router out of the box, and it's page-based routing. This means that I can create a pages directory here in my project, and I can create an index.view component, and we can go ahead and automatically um, Ionic will route to that as my index page. And any other file that I create in my pages directory, Nuxt Ionic will automatically create routes for those. So to configure that, we'll go ahead and set up the routing in our application. We'll do that in our app.view. Uh, right now, we kind of have this default uh, Nuxt welcome component. Instead, we're going to switch that out. Here we have the Ion app component. That is the kind of default Ionic application root component. Within that, we have our Ion router outlet component. This is what creates that page-based routing for us. So now um, in my index.view, I'll go ahead and just create like a simple hello world template here. Just do an H1, hello world, and save that. And I'll go ahead and restart my server so that it'll create those nice routes for us. And once that loads up, I here have my uh, index page with my hello world. Now it'll automatically create um, a route as well for, let's say we have a second page, resources.view, and I'll go ahead and just copy this over and change the title. Just to show you that it does create these routes for us. And again, just restart my server. So now if I, um, it'll still go to the index automatically, which is going to be my hello world. And if I go to my resources route, you can see that page that has been created. So all of that comes out of the box without having to configure anything. So, so far though, this app looks pretty uh, simple. We don't have any components. We don't have any styling. So let's go ahead and start to take advantage of those Ionic components that have been added to our application. I'm going to go ahead and just clean this branch out um, really quick here. And I'm gonna switch to a different branch that um, has some of these components already added for us. All right, so let's go ahead and show you what this application looks like. I'm gonna do a quick NPM install just to make sure we have everything set up on this branch here. All right, and then we'll go ahead and restart the server and take a look at what our app looks like now. And I'm going to go ahead and redirect to the root. 
All right, so now we have an index uh, page that has a nice next Ionic header up top and it has an icon, a title, and it has this button. When I click on that get started button, it takes us to our resources page. Here I have a list of items. I'm using some icons here um, and those each item is a link to a different resource uh, for Nux Ionic. You probably notice when I click between these pages, the get started and back but button, there's a nice animation that happens. And that is to mimic the native iOS experience and really provide that native look and feel for your user. And that comes out of the box with Ionic. So Ionic will automatically add those gestures and animations for you. So let's take a look at the code and what's happening here. So in my index.view page, instead of my simple just hello world h1, I now am using some Ionic components inside of my view template. So I have my ion page, which is going to be the root component for every page, as well as an ion header, and then my ion content. So every um, Ionic page template, you're gonna have pages the root with a header and a content inside. One thing I wanna note is that I'm not importing these components anywhere. Nuxt Ionic automatically imports all of these components for me. So I don't even have to create a script tag if I don't have any logic. I don't have to manage any of those manually. Uh, so here we can see that I have the my H1 that corresponds to the middle of the page and my ion button. Within my ion button, I'm using the router link attribute in order to link to my resources page. So whenever I'm using Next Ionic, I'm gonna to wanna to use that router link if I'm navigating to a different page in my project. You'll still use A for external links. We can see that in the resources.view page. So this is the second page that I have. We have my resources title up here. And here I have my ion list. Again, this is a component that's automatically provided by Ionic where I have my items and I have my icons. So Ionic icons are also automatically imported and you have a library of like 300 plus icons that you can use. And again, you don't have to import them. You don't have to configure them. They're just ready to go. You just pass the title through uh, to the icon component. And the nice thing is that if you're using VS Code and you have autocomplete set up, you can actually see what our, um, icons are available for you. So for example, here, you just start typing Ionicons and you can see all of the available icons. So those all come pre-installed. All right, so we have a, you know, a nice application. It's from an Air Mobile browser, but this is not native yet. We actually wanna be able to run this on a native device. So in order to do that, we're gonna go ahead and enable capacitor. So Ionic fr uh, framework is what gives you those nice UI components. Capacitor is what allows you to actually run your application on a native device. It comes built in with Nux Ionic, but you do need to enable it. So in order to do that, we're gonna go ahead and run Ionic integrations, enable capacitor. So what this is going to do, is this is going to add capacitor uh, to my project. And we can tell that that's been done because we now have a new capacitor config file in our project. Now I want to go ahead and add Android because I want to run this on an Android device. I can run a command line terminal, but I do want to show the Ionic VS Code extension. So here, um, this is the Ionic VS Code extension. It's built right into VS Code and it allows you to do certain things like run your project, build your project. And here as a recommendation, it's suggesting that I add Android. So if I click on that, what that's going to do, it's going to actually add Android to my application. And it's going to create this Android directory. This Android directory actually contains real you know, Java code. It's taken everything that I built in JavaScript and converted it to real native Android application. This means that now I can run my project on an actual Android device. So to do that, first I wanna create a production build of my web project. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first. And uh, for Nuxt, the command uh, for a static site generated, an SSG site is generate. So I'm gonna do npx nuxy generate. This is going to create a new production build that's optimized for production. Then I'm going to run npx cap sync this is gonna take that brand new production build and it's gonna copy it over to my Android uh, folder, my Android directory. If 
Finally, I can run npx cap run Android. And this is going to start my project on an Android device. Uh, let's see. Oh, typo. npx cap run Android. There we go. So this is going to create. Um, so it's going to have to ask me to choose a target device. I'm going to go ahead and choose the Pixel 6. This is an emulator that I have on my machine. It's running a Gradle build, which is creating um, an actual Android APK file that will be installed and run on my Pixel 6 emulator. So the emulator is starting up here, and it's going to go ahead and load that application. All right, so now I'm able to click through and interact with my application on an actual Android emulator. I can see that the heading looks a little bit different because these components have adaptive styling, meaning that it knows that on an Android device, I need to look this way versus an iOS device, it'll look a different way. Um, but we can see that this is what an Android user would expect their application to look like, even though it was built with JavaScript and not built for Android specifically. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is how I can go ahead and test it. And if I had an actual Android device, like, you know, I have my Pixel here, I could install that APK on my phone and even test it out myself on a real device as well. So that's, that's basically it. That's how easy it is to actually use JavaScript using Vue and Nuxt to create a native mobile application that will run on a real Android device.